What's going on everyone? Welcome to another run here with the Peterbilt 389 TAM edition here. And wow, I was really up on that wheel, wasn't I? Finally, finally getting around to rolling out with Big Larry's Batesville trailer. Uh, he's been trying to get... Yeah, you're going to stop, that's right. He's been trying to get this thing into the game for the longest time. Finally, with some help, uh, he has been able to do that, and... Awesome. <laughs> it really is. Um, it It's a company that I actually started out working for, and hence the name Casket Man. I did make burn boxes, cremation units, toe pinchers, stuff like that. Uh, cloth caskets as well. Uh, I then went into the dock area in a, in a, about a year or two later. I started loading the delivery trucks, shuttling trucks around, and it's also where I got my my driving. Uh, so from there, it was only natural. I got my, my license and started delivering caskets to funeral homes in the Chicagoland area. So five years here at Batesville before new management came in and decided to uh, take things in a different direction. Meaning not having me around. But, uh, you know, it was a very it was a very big learning experience for me, obviously being 19, 20, 21, you know, early 20s. Uh, and getting my start behind the wheel. Um, from there, I went on to a handful of other jobs before I was at my other place for eight years. And I'll tell you what, we had some weird stuff go on when I was working there in Batesville. And Larry here did a great job with this trailer. It's been in ETS for a while. And, see, I can't really get a good shot at this thing. He's made some updates to it as well. Uh, someone, I guess, was complaining about the, the graphics, the detail. And so he's fixed that as well. It looks great, in my opinion. I really like it. it, it, they're, it they don't use these trailers too often. Uh, you're not going to find 53-foot trailers too often on the highway. Certain areas they do. I'm not saying they never do. Um, just when they were based, when they had a, a warehouse in the Chicagoland area here, we didn't see them come in too often. It was usually the pups, the small trailers like you have for FedEx, as well as UPS. So, on the back you have different... Uh, different sayings, you know, heaven can wait, uh, what does that say, You're, yours may be on the next shipment, okay, that's different, um, you know, there, there's always different slogans on the back, um, there's a new one now, because you care, or something like that, I forget, or serving the ones that we love, or some slogan, they, they have different ones, and even other companies, you know, Aurora Casket, for example, they have their own, but really like this trailer, really like I can finally haul a casket trailer here, and even the cargo, 54,000 pounds, but as I was saying, these are not normally trailers that they haul, uh, I believe they still use them more towards the Pennsylvania side, Allentown, uh, which was another plant, uh, the ones that came out of Chicago, straighter from Batesville, Indiana, uh, a lot of them went to the Midwest as well as Canada. Canada all came out of Chicago CDC. So, you know, it was a it was a busy, busy area jumping. Now, some of the stories I have, I know I've shared before, but uh, it's uh, like one of them. Probably the weirdest. We had uh, Walter Payton's casket come through, and it was a solid mahogany rental unit because I believe he got cremated. So they rented a solid mahogany casket, and they uh, 
we decided to pull out the ooh, 99,000 pounds. That's um a little off. But uh, so we headed on the forklift and we decided to take some photos of it with the with the Polaroid. And what happened was out of two different packages, three different people taking photos. The uh, every single one turned out blurry. Every single one. Not one of them developed correctly. Now, for me, <laughs> to me, that's a little spooky. You know, it, those were five packs, so we're talking ten photos. You know, and we were starting to get some of these that just weren't turning out, weren't turning out. And I was like, hey, what the hell's going on here? And finally, we just gave up. You know, we can't sit here and continue to waste time we got to get this truck loaded and out of here and uh you know 10 photos though that came out i only saw seven of them uh, i guess the other ones were already thrown away but you know for every single photo to come out blurry that's got to be a little you know hair raising right there but uh you know it I learned a lot from that place, and I've seen, I saw a lot, probably more than I will ever have in my whole life. And being in an industry like that, it really, really kind of gives you a new perspective on life. You know, the petty crap that so many of us continue to argue about every day, regardless of whatever subject. I, I mean, basically everything it's really pointless because we're only here for so long so to sit here and dwell on things that see why is he going so damn slow see I'll dwell on that but uh, to sit here and dwell on things that many of us really have no control over you know it's outside of our control or it's fate you know it was going to happen, bad, disorder, bad decisions, good decisions, doesn't matter. You know, to sit here and uh, dwell on, the, on that stuff, it's really pointless. You're wasting valuable time. Because when your time has come, your time has come, there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But, you know, even in death, some people still have fun. One story comes from a couple of brothers that were on the west suburbs of Chicago here. And they were both very successful. Uh, one was a banker, and I think one was an investment guy, or he might have been a banker too. They both worked in money. And throughout their life, they were always trying to do one better than the other. So one got a nice big house. The other one had to go out and get a bigger house. One got, you know, uh, a Mercedes that sold 55 or whatever. For I'm just throwing a car out there, for example. And so the other one had to go out and get the SL55 AMG. Um, you know, one went to Hawaii. The other one had to go to the Caribbean or, you know, some other exotic place. You know, it always had to do one better than the other one. They were always going back and forth. And... Finally, one of them dies. So, you know, they, they had certain things in their will that had to be met. And one of them was, oh wait, this ain't looking good, the whole line of cars there, screw it. Uh, one of them, the last guy who, who was alive, his will said, whatever the casket is, it has to cost more. And, you know, be more valuable than what my brother had. And it turned out it was like $500 more, but still, you know, it, even in death, they were still trying to outdo each other. So, but, you know, a lot of other things were really depressing. And I'm not going to get into them here. I don't want to depress everyone. I don't want to depress everyone else with them, but, you know, it, too much death from senseless violence too much death from senseless stupidity 
Um, you know, when, like I said, when it's your time, it's your time, whether it's your fault or not. But, you know, I, I did see way too much of that. And, you know, and depressing as it was, it you know, also reminded me, like I said, life is precious, life is valuable. Except for those certain few who deserve to have it robbed of them. But, uh, you know, it, it's... I'm kind of at a loss of words. <laughs> it's, uh... It's not something to, to really joke about in a way because, you know, it happens. For me, I've turned stone cold to it. Um, I, I mean, I even loaded my own great aunts who my, my mom was very close with, uh, you know, so she wasn't just someone that we, you know, saw once every five years or something, but, uh, you know, loading caskets to family members onto the trucks to get delivered. I even remember what the great aunt's casket was. It was an AC-28 Primrose. Um, I actually, one of my subscribers, uh, I think he still works for Batesville, or he did. I think I saw him stay 17 years in the business. And if he, if he had a dollar for every casket he delivered, you know, and I could say the same thing, you know, being in the Chicagoland area, doing what I did for so long, you know, granted, 17 years compared to five, it's a little bit different, but, um, you know, our trucks would go out with, uh, 17, 18, 20, sometimes 24, 25 caskets a day, uh, going to the north suburbs, the west suburbs, the south suburbs, Indiana, far west, far south, you know, we, we had five or six trucks rolling out every day making deliveries, and on average, we probably had 18 to 20 caskets on there, going to various funeral homes every day, Monday through Saturday. So, there were even times where I loaded it up, I loaded a casket up into my pickup truck. You know, someone in a town near me, I, I lived near Kankakee at the time, and there were a couple of funeral homes who were known for making late afternoon emergency, you know, hey, we need this for tomorrow kind of calls. And they would want someone to go out. And I said, well, screw that. Throw a moving blanket on it. Throw it in the back of my pickup truck. I'll take it down there. Just toss on an extra hour of overtime for me. Okay. You know, it saves the company a little bit of time. You know, it, otherwise they're paying someone oh, at least two hours to get down and back. So... I uh, would go and do that. Threw it in the back of my, my Dakota. Throw a strap around it with the moving blanket on it. And uh, run it down there. Did that multiple times. Uh, actually had someone buy a burn unit. Uh, it, it was just basically particle board with wallpaper on it. You know, it was based no different than your own cheap, you know, Walmart uh, uh, entertainment cabinet entertainment center uh, that's what some of these caskets were and so we had one that was damaged and the guy was going to give me like 50 bucks for it because he sleeps in it I'm like hey do whatever you want dude so sure, I grabbed one that was busted you know and they're not going to care it's going to go into garbage anyway so threw it in the back of my truck drove it down there Had I had this thing built and it was in the back of my pickup truck all weekend, waiting for this guy to come over and pick it up. And so finally he picks it up, and he was stoked. He says he takes the locks off of it, and he has his own bedding, his own pillow, and he, he actually sleeps in it. Now, this guy was some goth guy. You know, he, had, he did his own tattoos. He cut his own tattoos into his arm. So, you know, a little different in the first place, but... You know, hey, to each their own. You want to go sleep in a casket? Go knock yourself out, dude. Give me my $50 and it's all yours. So, but yeah, did I get some looks driving around with that thing in the back of my truck? Surprised that no cops pulled me over, though. You know, why you got a casket in the back of your truck there, son?
little update on the 3.1 here as well. As some of you already know, I am testing this. This is the unreleased 3.1 uh, Things are coming along nicely now with the 352 here that the, that the guys are working on. So uh, they're kind of dividing their time. A couple of guys are still 100% dedicated to getting this done. And then they're going to go 100% towards the, uh, the 352. So this is, I, I don't quote me on it, it's not an official statement, but in my own personal insight with this, I don't think there's much left on this. Uh, there are a couple of bugs that we have seen personally ourselves here on my video with like the wipers, for example. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I think this truck is damn near close to being finished. So I haven't talked to the guys to see if there's an ETA. I will uh, leave a message about that with them, so hopefully one of them is able to get back to me on it. But I mean, I love how this engine sounds with this new exhaust brake. Um, California Dreaming. Ooh, hello. Why did everything just light up in here? Yeah, nicely, coming along nicely. I've had a few, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had a few calls from people to change my truck, to get away from the 389 here, go into something else. Once, you know, and, and I've talked about it before, and it is something I have seriously considered. So, it's not something I really rule out. But seeing I am testing this 389 here, I don't think I really should do that. Oh, that ain't gonna work. I'm gonna hit that damn pole. kind of feel like that video that's been going around of the guy driving the, the Kenworth W900 trying to make that left-hand corner on a residential street. Trust me, I know that is not an easy thing to do. I mean, in the video it looked like, okay, you got it, dude. Then wait a minute, why are you backing up? Why are you backing up? Because he had to recenter himself, but, you know, even in a, a straight truck, that is not easy to do. And I've had some stops, dealerships, where I had to do that. Park right there, get as close as you can to the parked car. I mean, so close, I can't even walk between my truck and the car. So I can keep a lane open, so I don't have C you know Chicago PD hassle me on it. For blocking the road because it's a residential street it was somewhat busy of a residential street so having to uh, make sure i am over to the right as far as i can while i get you know got the two filter cans out of this dealership because i couldn't park in their parking lot they were just too busy they were just you know too busy of a place it was too crowded all right time to have some fun i don't think i'm far enough up yet though As long as this chassis is, that's also causing me an issue. If this was a day cab, it would be a little different of a story. Cut back, come on, cut back. 
I'm gonna straighten it out, aren't I? Yes, I am. That is way, 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 way off. Way, way, way off. Let's get straightened out a little bit. Alright, that'll do. That'll do. So, there we go, guys. This is Big Larry's Batesfield Casket Company. There is another one that is available on Steam, but Larry had it out first. I like it. I like it. it brings back memories for me. Very happy, very happy. Thank you, Larry. So I will have this in the link, or the link in the description. It'll also be in my mods list as well. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on Wednesday for backhaul. Don't know if I'm using the 352 yet or if I'm going to use something else. We'll see what happens. Until then, take it easy.